Nan McKay and Associates has produced this video to be used in informing clients of housekeeping basics. Use of this video is limited to authorized users who have purchased the video Nan McKay and Associates Housekeeping Basics from Nan McKay and Associates. Unauthorized use is subject to civil and criminal penalties. We are committed to ensuring full access to participation. If you need an accommodation for a disability in order to have full access to our services, please let us know. When you participate in an assisted housing program through your public housing agency, your home is inspected annually to determine if it's maintained in an acceptable condition. While the inspection focuses on health and safety requirements, how well you maintain your home on an ongoing basis definitely makes a difference in the overall condition. This video will provide you with information on ways to maintain your home and provide you with many useful housekeeping tips, most of which are very simple to follow. Some of these ideas are preventative, designed to save you time and trouble in the long run. We will start by looking at your unit room by room. Then we will look at some general cleaning needs, such as dusting, floors, and windows. Let's begin with the first area seen in your home, the actual entry area. To prevent dirt or mud from being tracked inside, it is a good idea to have a doormat immediately outside your front door. A small entryway rug will also help keep this area clean. Some cleaning experts take this a step further, recommending that family members and guests remove their shoes upon entry. Most dirt is tracked in from our shoes, so this suggestion may work for you and your family. Next, let's take a look at one of the least favorite rooms to keep clean, the kitchen. The first rule is to make sure that all foods are stored properly. Use containers with covers that seal tightly to store foods such as cereal, flour, sugar, and rice. This will help avoid attracting ants and other insects. It really is much easier to take steps to avoid insects than it is to get rid of the insects once they are present. Store your dishes and pots and pans in the appropriate cupboards and cabinets. Just eliminating some of this potential clutter goes a long way towards a clean kitchen and helps ensure you have adequate working space for meal preparation. If one is not provided in your kitchen, invest in a good cutting board. There are some very inexpensive acrylic cutting surfaces available and it is important to protect your countertops. Make sure you thoroughly clean the cutting board after use to avoid food contamination from bacteria and other foodborne illnesses. You may want to use a brush to clean cuts and grooves in the cutting board surface. Protecting your countertops also means not setting hot items directly on the surface. Using a hot pad or other type of protection will prevent damage from burns and scratches. Nobody enjoys washing dishes, but this job is made much easier by washing dishes as soon as possible after meal preparation. This way, food does not have the chance to dry and firmly adhere to the plates and bowls. If time doesn't allow you to fully wash the dishes, be sure to rinse them immediately. The seconds it will take right after use will save you many minutes later. Wash the dishes before the pots and pans using warm water, dish soap, and a clean cloth or sponge. After washing, rinse the dishes in warm water and dry using a commercial rack. If you don't have a rack, use a clean towel. If you have a dishwasher, run it before you go to bed and unload it first thing in the morning. Try to end each day with a clean, empty kitchen sink. Don't overlook the importance of taking care of your cleaning materials. If you have a microwave, microwaving your sponge or dishcloth for 20 seconds will kill any bacteria present. But be very careful. The cloth or sponge will be extremely hot, so allow plenty of time for cooling before using. Always clean all countertops in the stove and sink after cooking. Warm, soapy water works well when wiping down the outside of the oven and stove, but there are also many good cleansers available in stores. Although you may not need to clean these areas after each time you cook, do look over knobs, burners, 
drip pan areas, oven racks, and broiler pans to see if cleaning is needed. If you have a garbage disposal, there are steps that you can take to eliminate odors as well as any accumulated debris that may be causing the odors. Occasionally running small lemon or lime pieces through the garbage disposal will help leave a clean, fresh smell. Another helpful hint is to sprinkle a couple of teaspoons of baking soda down the drain, add in two ice cubes, and turn on the disposal. While the disposal is running, run hot water for a few minutes. Sweep the kitchen floor regularly and mop it weekly with warm water and a household cleanser. Wiping down cabinets and appliances and washing the dish rack should also be done on a weekly basis, along with wiping down switch plates and the inside of the garbage can. At least four times a year, empty and scrub down the inside of the refrigerator. While you are doing this, inspect the labels of jars and bottles and dispose of anything that has passed the expiration date. Make sure you clean around the door seal as well. This is also a good time to empty and clean the inside of utensil drawers and to clean the stove hood filter. Here's a little tip. Dry baking soda makes a great chrome cleaner. When disposing of garbage, plastic kitchen bags are effective. Using a garbage can with a lid will help reduce odors and spills. Empty your garbage when full or when there is excess food debris. Now let's move to the room that is everyone's least favorite, the bathroom. The bathroom should be cleaned weekly and even more frequently if it gets heavy use from a large family. Fortunately, most bathrooms are made of materials that are easy to keep clean. Tile and porcelain surfaces are stain resistant if dirt and scum are not allowed to build up on them. Try to make it a firm rule in your home to rinse out the tub or shower stall immediately after use. Spray water from the shower head on all interior surfaces, then lather soap onto a damp sponge, swish it around the tub or stall, and rinse. Keep mildew from taking hold by also wiping shower walls with a towel after each shower. If the bathroom has shower doors, you can also discourage mildew growth by leaving the shower doors open slightly to allow air to circulate. Hard water deposits can be removed from shower enclosures by using a solution of white vinegar and water and cleaning glass shower doors with a sponge dipped in white vinegar will leave them sparkling. When you clean the bathtub, remove hair from drain traps to prevent clogging. Use a damp sponge and a non-abrasive cleanser to clean the inside of the tub. If there are rust stains, commercial rust removers can be very effective. But use caution, these products contain acid. If you do work with these products, be sure to wear rubber gloves. If bathroom tile needs a thorough cleaning, running the shower water at its hottest temperature will allow steam to loosen the dirt before cleaning. But don't use harsh abrasive powders or steel wool pads to clean tile. If dealing with plastic laminate, use a two-sided scrubbing pad with fiber on one side and a sponge on the other. The fiber side is just abrasive enough to loosen grease and dirt. Turn the scrubber over and use the sponge side to wipe clean. When cleaning the sink and faucet, use a sponge or cloth. Old toothbrushes are often great cleaning tools and they are especially effective for cleaning those little crevices that make up a faucet. Although there are many commercial products available to clean glass and mirrors, common household items can be very effective. Try this. Pour vinegar into a shallow bowl or pan, then crumple a sheet of newspaper. Dip it in the vinegar and apply to the mirror. Wipe the glass several times with the same newspaper until the mirror is almost dry. Then shine it with a clean, soft cloth or dry newspaper. It is time to address that most dreaded of chores, cleaning the toilet. The good news is that toilet bowls and tanks are usually made of non-porous, easy to clean, vitreous china. When using commercial cleaning products, be sure to read the label to learn exactly how the product should be used. Watch for products that contain chlorine bleach or ammonia-based products. Never mix products that contain chlorine bleach with ammonia-based products. Always wear rubber gloves when you work with toilet cleaners. 
To clean your toilet quickly and efficiently, keep a long handle brush available. Try an overnight cleaning by putting two denture cleanser tablets in the toilet and letting them sit overnight. Follow up by scrubbing the toilet the next morning. Make certain you scrub inside the toilet rim as well. And don't forget to clean the outside of the toilet seat, including the base and tank. Again, never mix chlorine bleach products with ammonia base products. Rust stains under a toilet bowl rim sometimes yield to laundry bleach, but be sure to protect your hands with rubber gloves. Rub off truly stubborn stains with extra fine steel wool or with wet dry sandpaper, available at hardware stores. Periodically, clean out the medicine cabinet. Medications should always be kept out of children's reach. Shelves can be easily washed with a sponge and warm soapy water and rinsed with clean water. To avoid rust and or mildew, it is important to make sure the shelves are completely dry before returning items to the shelves. Mildew can also grow on shower curtains and bath mats. To help, whenever you purchase a new shower curtain, use the old shower curtain as a liner. With the old curtain hanging inside the shower or tub enclosure, the new curtain will stay clean longer. If you need to clean a bath mat that is either rubber or vinyl, simply toss it into the washer with your bath towels. Now that we've dealt with the bathroom, let's move on to the room that is probably the easiest room to get and to keep clean. That is the bedroom. One of the biggest problems to deal with here is dust. So if you are going to shake out or change sheets, do this first rather than last. This way, you won't find yourself dealing with dust twice. Wherever you are dusting, always start at the top and work down. This may include dealing with cobwebs. Depending on how severe the problem is, you can deal with it by using a lightweight broom, a dust rag, or your vacuum cleaner using the brush attachment. For very light cobwebs and for general dust, simply spritz a cloth with dusting spray and make your way around the room in a clockwise circle, working from the outside in. When dusting the bedroom, get under and behind the bed. Dust shelves and wipe down doors with a damp cloth. Here is another little cleaning tip. When you need to wipe down picture frames and lampshades, just slip an old sock over your hand. This makes for a very quick and easy way to dust these items. Save vacuuming or mopping for last. Don't miss those corners and edges. These same dusting and vacuuming guidelines apply to your living room. The living room is probably the first area to accumulate clutter, so this is an area that should be addressed daily. The easiest way is to do your best to deal with the messes as they come. If you have children, try keeping a basket or some other container handy in an easy access, convenient corner for quick and easy toy cleanup. Sort mail right away, disposing of trash and organizing bills. Never leave dirty dishes in any room. Take the time to at least rinse them off in preparation for washing. Make it a habit to dispose of unwanted magazines and newspapers at the same time you are emptying trash. If your home has stairs, make it easy on yourself by keeping a basket with a handle at the foot of the stairs. This way you can use the basket to temporarily store anything that needs to be returned upstairs. Whenever you do go upstairs, you can just pick up the basket and take it along with you. Then, just take a moment to return items to where they belong before the next time you come down the stairs and return the basket to its resting place. Now, what are some easy ways to deal with ongoing cleaning tasks, such as windows and laundry? First, keep a little window cleaning kit in an easy to grab spot. Try using a cloth or paper towels along with an all-purpose surface cleaner. With this cleaner, you can clean not only the glass, but frames and windowsills all at the same time. Second, remember that you do not have to clean every window at one time. Do you have a favorite television program or two? 
Try cleaning one window at a time during commercial breaks. The reality is that washing dirty clothes is not all that difficult. It is the folding or ironing and putting away of those clothes that is so time consuming. Folding clothes is a chore easily done while talking on the telephone or watching TV. Ironing is another great task that can be done during television commercials. Once clothes are folded or ironed, it really does not take long to put the clothes away. If you are responsible for taking care of your yard and the exterior of your home, here are some basic tips. Keep the outside of the home neat and free from litter. You may need to use a heavy duty broom to hard brush cobwebs from under the eaves. To remove dirt and grime, try a hose with a pistol nozzle that allows you to direct a heavy duty stream of water exactly where needed. Water your lawn as needed, but be water conscious. During hot weather, it is best to water in the early morning or in the evening. If there is a timed sprinkler system, be sure to turn it off during wet, rainy, or winter weather. During spring and summer, mow the lawn at least every other week and during other times of the year as needed. During the fall, rake leaves regularly. Not all problems or maintenance needs for the unit are your responsibility, so know who to contact when you note something that needs repair and report any problems right away. If you do not report the item, the problem can worsen. In some cases, you might even be considered at least partially responsible because you did not report the problem. Sometimes it is readily apparent that a repair is needed, but even if you are unsure, report the problem. Just a little time and effort daily will ease the stress of keeping your home clean and in good condition. Follow these guidelines. Maintain a regular schedule. As a result, you can feel worry-free when the housing agency schedules their annual visit to review the condition of your home. Now, relax, settle in, and enjoy your home.